in perspective drawing, when we talk about scale, what we're talking about, if you prefer to think of it in terms of the principles of design, is proportion. We're comparing size to size. When you're comparing sizes, it's all about proportion. But when you're dealing with three-dimensionality, sometimes it's referred to as scale. For example, you can buy a scale model of a car if you go into the store. And when you put it together, it's not the same size as the actual car. It's a scale model. That is to say that everything on there has been scaled down or appropriately made smaller using the original dimensions. Let's talk a little bit more about scale now. This is, will be part one. Take a look at the room that I've just drawn. Notice how it looks as though it's a huge room. This person that I've drawn in the room is dwarfed by how tall the walls are. But let's suppose that I redraw this person. And I draw this person like this. You see how now the room appears to be of a more normal size, although it's still quite deep. That is a function of scale. You can control how big or how small things look in the room. By comparing the size of the person to the room, it changes your perception of the size of the room. Let's move on. When we're drawing a room, the first thing we need to do is establish a back wall if we're drawing in one point perspective. Once we have that back wall established, the next thing we should do is determine where our vanishing point is. How do we know where the vanishing point is? Well, if we determine the scale of the room, let's pretend that we want this to be an eight foot tall room. By dividing this back wall into eight pieces, accurately, we now have established our scale. That is to say that one of these spaces will equal one foot. Let me refer to this line as being a foot. From now on, this will equal an inch. If I number these, starting with number one, and remember, number one has to be at the mark, not at the floor. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then this top line here, the top of the room, would be eight feet. The average room is eight feet tall. So now, if I want to put in a vanishing point line at about the average eye level of a person, that would be at about five to five and a half feet. I'm going to use the five foot line for right now. I'm going to come across at that five foot line and I'm going to determine a vanishing point right there. Now that I've determined that vanishing point, I can draw orthogonal lines, that is to say lines that go directly to the vanishing point where that horizontal line intersects with that vertical line. I'm going to draw lines out from the corners of my room, out and off of my paper. These orthogonal lines, you will not be drawing lines back here. That orange line that I've just drawn should not be drawn. We're going to go right from the corner straight off. You'll notice that I have not gone to the corner of my paper. That's because where I put my vanishing point has nothing whatsoever to do with where I've cut the edge of my paper. So don't be afraid to draw these orthogonal lines going off the paper, but not hitting the corner. They need to be orthogonals. That is to say, they need to go directly to the vanishing point. The fact that they're not going to the corner, absolutely 100% okay. The next thing I would do is I would use my ruler 
and I would make sure that these are placed correctly. That is to say, we want them spaced exactly the same amount of space apart. Then I can just slide up my T-square and make the marks on the other side using my first correctly measured marks on the right. If you take a look at what I've now done, I moved the marks from the right side over to the left side, and then I used my ruler and I made the same size increments that I've used on the right and left on the bottom and on the top. I've now established my scale for this room. If I want to say that this unit is one foot, then that means that down here, one of these units will be one foot as well. I've now established scale for the room. If I want to draw a three foot by three foot square on the back wall, I would find the three foot mark here and I would draw across to the three foot mark here and establish that as my three foot by three foot square. Now you can see that because I have not been using a ruler, this does look as though it's a little bit longer this way than it is top to bottom. That's not a good thing and you have to make sure that when you draw and you measure, you do it accurately. If you don't know how to use a, a ruler accurately, please refer to my video on how to use a ruler. At this point, if we want to draw a three foot by three foot box in the room, we have now established the back wall of the box. We would draw a reverse transparent box. That is to say that we're now going to draw orthogonals going from the vanishing point out, out, out. You have to get them to the corners though. Can't be missing the corners. And then we need to stop the box in space. Well, we know that the front of the box and the back of the box have to both be squares or rectangles. It's just that the back of the box will be smaller and the corners have to be attached by orthogonals. And so if this back area here is a vertical, then that means that our front will stop with a vertical. Then we have the top being a horizontal, so we know that the top will be a horizontal. I'm going to get rid of a couple of these lines here so that you can now see what I'm doing. And if I've done this correctly, this would actually wind up being in the corner. This is a little bit of a problem here because I'm not using a T-square and triangle. So let me make sure that I get this looking as correctly as I possibly can for you. These are all orthogonals, verticals, and horizontals. Okay, so here's the side of the box. This is the corner of the room. Okay, so now we have this side of the box, we have the bottom of the box, we have this side, and we have the top. When we're all done, this front area should be the exact same shape as the back of the box here, except that it should be a little bit smaller in back. All right, so this is how big a three foot by three foot rectangle would look closer to us. It's bigger, back here, it's smaller. I hope this is clear. If not, don't be afraid to ask a question. You've learned a little bit about scale. Hope you've enjoyed it.